Welcome back and today we are going to take a deep dive into the different charting features in Edgewonk, starting with the equity graph and then we will make our way through the chart lab. We want to see how the different features can help us understand our trading performance better, what lessons we can take from them and then ultimately how we can improve our trading by making targeted adjustments based on the features in Edgewonk. Let's start here with the equity graph. We can collapse the sidebar. And by default, you can see we have our performance here in percentage ROI. You can change that and change the way the performance is being shown here. We can see our performance in our multiple, in regular percentage, in account balance, and also in the gain and loss. On the left side, you have your units here. And then here at the bottom, you see the trade amounts. When you hover over the line graph, an info box comes up and you can just click on the data point and that will bring up the specific trade behind this data point. You can see the trade, you can make changes, you can write your notes, you can attach your screenshots and everything else. All of the filters are applicable in the equity graph and all other features in Edgewonk as well. So when we want to analyze a specific part of our trading, we can just open our filters and let's assume we want to analyze a different setup here and only look at the performance of this setup. We close the filter and this is then the performance only with the filter applied. We can see when our performance dips below zero and we can very nicely analyze the performance. When we want to clear the filter, we open it back up and we can just clear it and we are back to our regular view. Another very helpful thing is that we can overlay different metrics and performance statistics here on the equity graph. For that, we open the options menu and we can, for example, add the tilt meter here. And now in the background, you see the tilt meter here, the cumulative tilt meter. The tilt meter gives you an idea about how well you respect your trading rules, whether you break your trading rules or whether you are able to trade disciplined. When the tilt meter is going up, it shows you that you are trading with discipline and you're making good trading decisions. A declining tilt meter shows you that you're breaking your trading rules. Very often you will see that when your performance is rising here, as we can see in the line graph, the tilt meter is also on a rise, which shows the positive correlation between good trading results and good trading decisions. Here, when our trading performance topped out and we saw the decline here, the tilt meter also went down, which shows that bad trading decisions are followed by bad trading results. It's a very interesting correlation here. Underneath the chart, you'll see a few statistics and important key metrics about the data that is displayed at this point. Let's go to our chart lab and let's make our way through the different charts. First of all, you can compare different charts. So by using the different dropdowns here, you can compare different parts of your trading strategy and see correlations and just analyze them side by side. By going through the consecutive losses and win graph, you will see different winning and losing streaks. By default, we start with the losing streaks. We can change that to winning streaks. And then we can analyze different parts of our trading where we have five winners in a row, four winners in a row, all the way up to nine winners in a row. When you hover over the bar, you see the total profit that the consecutive winning streaks of five winners in a row has generated. And you can again change the values and the metrics here using the second drop-down menu. The custom stats are one of our most powerful and most used feature. And you can pretty much track anything in Edgewonk. You can tag your trades using our 20 different custom statistics. For example, here, the trader chose to track timeframes on his trades. And we can very nicely see that the higher time frame, the daily time frame, is underperforming for the trader. Whereas the lower time frame, 15 minute until 4 hour, are mostly always showing a positive outcome. And we can switch between the different custom statistics here. For example, in this journal, we also have a custom statistic for the mental state. And we can very nicely see that positive mental states and positive attributes such as exercising and a good mood overall led to good trading results, whereas negative mental states led to negative trading results. It's a very great way to get away from the statistical point of analysis and also look into qualitative things in your trading and how they impact your performance. And you can pretty much use anything in the custom statistics, tag your trades, and then use the custom statistic analyses. Next is the drawdown. And what we see here is how far away is your current account balance from the highest account balance. So when the drawdown is here at zero, it means that you are trading at an absolute all time high and your account is growing into new all time highs. So we have a drawdown of zero. When we go to this point here, we can see we have a drawdown of negative 1.46%. That means the current account balance is 1.46% away from your all time high. 
This is also referred to sometimes as underwater table or underwater graph. We see our worst drawdown, the average drawdown and our current drawdown that we are in. The efficiency graph is a way to visualize your trading comments in a different way. Efficiency refers to how well are you able to respect your trading rules. The higher the efficiency, the more you are able to follow your trading plan and respect your trading rules. When you see a decline in your efficiency, it means that you have repeatedly broken your trading rules. The efficiency is activated by using the trade entry, the trade exit and the trade management comments. In general, you want to see a high or rising efficiency. When you see that your efficiency is dipping below 50, it means that on more than half of your trading decisions, you have made bad and negative trading decisions. The efficiency graph is a great way of visualizing your overall level of discipline and how well you can adhere to your trading rules. The exit analysis graph visualizes the price behavior during your trades. Each bar, the green and the red part, represent one trade. The green area of the graph shows how close has the price come towards your take profit. The take profit is here the horizontal green area. Here, for example, we can see we have an updraw of 91%. This means the price came 91% towards your take profit. On the other hand, the red part shows how close was the price towards your stop loss. The stop loss is here the horizontal red line. In this case, the drawdown is negative 43%. This means that the price went 43% against you. The price didn't even come halfway towards your stop loss. The black diamond marker shows the trade exit. In that case, the trade exit was at the absolute high point of the price action and very close to the take profit. Sometimes you will see that your diamond marker is passing your stop loss. That shows instances where the trader probably took off the initial stop loss manually and then closed the trade beyond the stop loss. So the loss he realized is larger than the initially anticipated stop loss and that means he mismanaged the trade. When you see instances where repeatedly the bar graph exceeds the take profit, it means that maybe you're setting your take profit too conservative and the price often shoots above your take profit. In those instances, a trader might consider using a more aggressive take profit approach and maybe use take profits that are a little bit further away. The holding time graph visualizes the holding time in combination to the profit. On the left, you will see the y-axis for your gain and the loss per trade. So when a dot is above this zero line, it means it's a winning trade. Below this zero line, it means it's a losing trade. You can hover over the different data points and you can see the holding time and the total gain and loss for that trade. You can click on that and then it brings up the trade. If you are a day trader, you probably want to change the units. You don't want to analyze your holding time in days and you can do that here and change the holding time to hours and even minutes. Next is the performance by instrument. And this visualizes the performance based on the different instruments that you are trading and that you have tagged in Edgewonk. So we can, for example, change the sorting and we want to change it by the value. And then we get a very nice order from the best performing to the worst performing instruments. In this case, most of the trading instruments are profitable, but there are a few where the trader is losing money. This could mean that the trading strategy that he is using for his trading is not correctly adjusted to those instruments. This can have various reasons. Maybe the volatility is different. Maybe trading times should be adjusted. The performance by setup works very similar. Here we get a visual breakdown of the performance based on the different setups or strategies that the trader has used in Edgewonk. Again, we can change the sorting and we can see that all of the setups are profitable except for when the trader didn't use a setup. This may refer to trades where he broke the rules and he took random trades and also the spike setup is underperforming. So that's a great insight because it shows the trader that he could look into the spike trades to find ways to improve them or stop trading them altogether because they're just costing him money overall. Next is the performance by time. By default, you get the breakdown of your performance by the different weekdays, but we can change that. And as a day trader, you want to look at your performance by the hour of the day. So here we can get the performance broken down into the 24 hour period of the day. And we can see the trader is performing very well after 8 a.m. But before 8 a.m. he's losing money. Again, a very important insight because it can show the trader that his trading strategy is not performing well in specific times. We also have the performance by day. So you can see day by day, how is your overall performance? We can change how many days are shown here by default. And you can very nicely see that this controller 
adjust the number of trades that you are seeing here in this graph. By default, we look at the exit date for the performance. But if you want to look at the entry date, you can also change that here. Under performance ratios, you can visualize the different performance ratios in Edgewonk. For example, we have the Sharp Ratio, Sortino, Gain to Pain, Karma, and also the Profit Factor. Activating one brings the performance ratio here. We can also layer multiple on top of each other and then analyze them and see the performance and the development over time. The R distribution is another very helpful and insightful feature. And what we do here is that the performance is broken down into different R multiple intervals. R multiple will work in your trading journal when you have entered a stop loss and a take profit for your trades. And when we hover over those bars, you can see the number of trades that fall into a specific interval. For example, here we have eight trades that fall into the interval between 1 and 1.5. Especially helpful is to look for outliers, as we have explained in our journaling course. Here, for example, we have one trade that falls into the negative interval between negative 4.5 and 4. This is definitely something that you need to examine closer, because it shows that the trader let the price run significantly beyond the initial stop loss and realized a loss that was much larger than anticipated. You can also look at the positive outliers, and we have 10 trades that have an R multiple larger than 10. This is great because it shows that there are a lot of trades where the trader realizes a very large performance gain. It might be worth to examine those trades in your journal. What we can do is, for example, we go back to our journal and then we have our basic filter for R multiple. And we can scroll down to go to the highest interval and then we see those trades with the highest interval in R multiples. We can scroll here to the right a little bit and here we have our R multiple gain. And then we can drill down and see what do those trades have in common? Why did they perform so well? And then we can try to replicate that and see if we can use that approach for other areas of our trading. Just going back to the equity graph, still the filter is activated. We can see that this is a huge gain for the trader. In total, those trades with a larger than 4.5 reward to risk ratio made 3,600 US dollar. And this is the majority of his trading profits. So the majority of his trading profits just come from a handful of trades. Next, let's go to the trade comments. The trade comments visualize the trade entry, the trade exit, and the trade management comments. For example, we're starting with the trade entry comments. Here we can see that the trades where the trader said he had a perfect entry are overperforming, which makes sense. And whenever he broke the trading rules, whether he entered too late, he had an impulsive entry, he entered too early, or he revenge traded, he lost money on aggregate. So this is a great confidence boost because it shows the trader he just needs to listen to the rules and then his performance is very positive. We can change that and look at our trade exit comments and we see the same picture. When the trader followed all of the rules, he realized a significant positive performance. The trade management graph is one of the most helpful graphs because it analyzes your trade management behavior. Are you letting your winners run optimally or are you cutting your losses short in an inefficient way? We have three lines. We want to focus on the actual and the potential performance. This is all measured in R multiple. The actual performance shows you how well you are doing in terms of R multiple. And the green line shows you potentially how you well you could have done by not managing your trades. So the green line is based on a passive management approach. When you see, like in this case, the actual performance is higher than the potential performance, that's a good sign because it shows you that you couldn't have made more money. But some traders will see that the potential performance is above the actual performance. This means that potentially the trader could have made more money. It's usually due to cutting winners too soon or letting losses run too long. If you see that your potential performance is above your actual performance, a passive management approach where you don't interfere with your trades would have performed better. The trade management graph is a great way to analyze your trading decisions. And then finally, we have the win rate. The design of the win rate over time will be adjusted shortly. But what you see here is a development of your win rate over time. So when we hover over, we can see we have a win rate of 52.63%. At the peak here, we had a win rate of 62.1%. And of course, again, we can use all of the filters to drill down into specific parts of the trading strategy and the trading approach to analyze different trading strategies, different trading processes, and see how they differ in terms of the performance. The goal is to find underperforming and overperforming parts of your strategy so that when you find an underperforming part, you can try to look for ways to fix that. 
And when you find an overperforming part of your trading, you want to leverage that and try to find ways how you can take more trades that are similar to that.